Hello everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on Unit 7, Question 3. Don't forget that this is the examined component of the second year of the BTEC Extended Diploma in Applied Science. I've done a few different videos like this already, focusing on questions 1 and 2, so please make sure you check those out before you come to this one. So the first thing that you should understand is what question three is asking for. It's a 12 mark question that asks you to discuss whether article three has made valid judgments. Note that it's only asking you about article three, so you do not need to talk about the other articles in great detail, but you might find that you have to refer to them in your answer. It goes on to say that in your answer, you should consider how the article has interpreted and analyzed the scientific information to support the conclusions or the judgments that have been made, the validity and the reliability of data, and references to other sources of information. To get the full marks in this question, you need to ensure that you consistently support your arguments with evidence from the articles. Many of you will look at this question and think, where on earth do I even start? Especially when you look at Article 3, it's normally really long, it's the one that's got a horrendous number of references at the end, and it's really difficult to know where you're actually going to begin. The first thing I always say to my students is split your answer up into three parts, and these three parts aren't in any particular order. The first part is looking at the judgments that are made by the article. Are they positive judgments or are they negative judgments? What have they said about the scientific issue? Number two is to think about what your definitions of validity and reliability are and to write them down in your answer. Do you think that Article 3 is valid or reliable? Usually my students find it easier to start their answers off for question three by defining what validity and reliability means to them. And then they actually go on to say whether they think the article is valid and the remainder of the essay is a summary of the conclusions that they've made about validity and reliability. As a part of the answer, you'd need to mention whether you think there's bias or whether the article is written in an optimistic overview or not. This information would go into your plan and you would just be able to refer back to your plan when you're writing your essay in the exam. The third part of the essay would be to talk about the references that have been used. So look at the article to see if it's referenced throughout. Most of the Article 3 so far have always been from like blogs or journals or scientific papers with a whole heap of references at the end. So you have to look at those and try to assess how old they are. Some of them might be older and so they may be dated and not as valid as current ones. Equally though, you may have references with an older date, but it might demonstrate that the idea or scientific research or findings have been looked at for years and therefore are deemed to be reliable and valid. The other thing you should consider about the references is whether they're from the same person or different people. Like if an article uses 10 references and five of them are from the same researcher, that might affect the validity or reliability. If different people are corroborating the same theory or finding, then you could deem that to be more reliable or more valid. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense now kind of talk to you about how you might be able to split your answer up. Please remember that splitting your answer up into these three parts is in no particular order. So you can do these in any order that you like in your essay. But also remember that these are just my guidances. OK, so this is taken from examined reports and feedback that I've seen on the official WeTech documents. Now, Article 3 will also have data or graphs within it that you will need to interpret, analyse and evaluate. The data will either be qualitative or quantitative, and this table here is designed to allow you to understand the two types of data and how you might ascertain validity or reliability. Remember that qualitative data is subjective and can be deemed not to be as valid or reliable as it could be based on just opinion or someone's own judgment. Quantitative, on the other hand, uses calculations or statistical analysis, which is generally more objective and arguably more reliable and valid. You could also argue in your essay that without quantitative data, theory is just theory. If data has been presented to you in the article, then there are a few points that I give some guidance on that I think you should probably consider. Look at the data to make sure that all of the figures or information that's been presented can be verified by others or by trusted publications, as this is deemed to be more reliable. Make sure that when you look at tables or graphs, you read all of the data points, as some of them might be missed out or may not even be suitable. 
You might even find that some of the way that the data has been collected could have been done better. Lastly, look for anomalous results or outliers in the data. It might indicate that something went wrong in the study, so that should be something that you should talk about. So far, I've mentioned the words valid and reliable about a hundred times just in this video alone, so I guess we should really look at how we can deem information to be valid or reliable. The information on your article can be deemed as valid if the investigation actually measures what it's set out to measure. If you look at your study and it provides some form of corroboration of other similar studies where they found similar findings, then this is also deemed as valid. If the outcomes of the study provide information which may improve the area of a study, then this is also deemed as valid. And there may be a panel of individuals that may have reviewed the investigation or that the study has been peer reviewed, which often happens before journals are published, then that's something that you can use to support your argument. Secondly, information can be deemed reliable if that study is repeatable and provides similar or the same results. So that's kind of goes hand in hand with the validity of the corroboration of similar studies. If the results of that study are repeatable by others, then we can say that that is also reliable. If you've been provided data in the form of tables or graphs and you can deem that there is a pattern available in that data or there's a pattern that you've identified, then you could argue that the data is reliable. And you should probably look for secondary data that supports the primary data. So if, say, for example, you've got a study that looks at the development of, an, of a research project and you want to see that the primary data that the study has presented supports any secondary data that they've compared to, then that would make that particular study more reliable. So hopefully that helps you understand what reliability and validity is and how you might assess it in terms of the information that you're given. So when you prepare for the actual exam, there's a number of things that I ask my students to do. I've already talked about looking at the references. The idea here is that the more references a paper has, the more you can argue that it's reliable and valid. Obviously, as I mentioned before, you do need to go through the references and check how good they are. Don't just assume that having 55 references, for example, at the end of the paper makes that finding of that paper really reliable because there are other factors that can contribute. The second thing I ask my students to do is to make a note of the key facts which appear most common in the sources used. Here, you can argue that the more common something is, the more likely it is to be valid or reliable. On the other hand, if a claim is made in one source which you've not previously encountered, you have to research that information in your prep time to gain a further understanding and to validate that information, particularly if it's something new. The research that you'd have done will be in your six hours of prep. So it's really important that you use that six hours carefully and productively. Lastly, I ask my students to make a note of the development of the information over time. This might help to contribute to reliability. I always get asked about the number of references at the back of the article number three, and students often wonder how many references is enough. And I always say to them that a big list doesn't necessarily mean that the study is automatically reliable or valid. For example, the references might be really old, or they might be from unreliable sources. You should check if the article or the study has been peer reviewed, and if so, by whom. If it was published in a journal, then it would make it pretty reliable as it would have to have gone through a number of official steps before it was published, one of which is peer review. So that would make it quite reliable. Are there any studies that had similar findings? If so, that might also add to the reliability and the validity. So I hope that was super useful for you. If you are working on your question threes, you might want to make sure you actually look at the material that's been published on the BTEC website. And if you're unable to access it, please drop me an email. You can access my contact details in the description below or leave me a comment and I can get back to you. It is really important that you can practice it on exam materials because that gives you a better idea of the types of things that you need to say about reliability and validity of Article 3. As always, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the video. And if there are any questions, then leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching and please make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Bye for now.